A court of appeal sitting in Oweri, the Imo state capital, has upheld the judgment of the federal high court, which dismissed a suit filed by Senator Samuel Anyawu challenging the primary election that saw Imo state governor Imekai Hedoha emerge as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the last governorship election. Delivering the judgment, the presiding judge, Justice Rafael Agu, says that the plaintiff, Mr. Samuel Anyawu, did not show enough evidence to convince the court of the prayers. He sought that he should be declared the authentic winner of the PDP primary elections in October 2018. Justice Agbo says the court could not establish the fact that the plaintiff's claims that the primary election was marred with irregularities. It therefore dismisses suit for lack of proof. Senator Samuel Anyawu, uh, governorship aspirant under the People's Democratic Party, in the last elections had approached the court seeking to nullify the victory of Mr. Hedoha and be declared as the authentic winner of the PDP governorship primary election last October after claiming that the primaries were marred with irregularities. In Taraba State, Governor Darius Ishaku has asked the judiciary in the country to always ensure speedy dispensation of justice. The governor was speaking at a valedictory session in honor of the retired Chief Justice of Taraba State, Justice Josephine Tukor. On her part, the outgoing chief judge expressed confidence in the state's judges and encouraged them to protect the sanctity of the judiciary. The valedictory session also attracted the former chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Muhammad, among other judges and senior lawyers from across the country. I want to plead on behalf of the judiciary that adequate steps be taken by the relevant government agencies to resolve all administrative bottlenecks so as to realize the full implementation. Suffice it to quote from late Osman Danfodio, peace upon him, that I quote, a country can survive without religion, but no country can survive without justice, unquote. Therefore, the need to make the working of the judiciary smooth cannot be overemphasized, as the judiciary is not only the last hope of the common man, but without it, government and society cannot function. Governor Abdullahi Ganduja of Kano State has ordered the State Anti-Corruption Commission to probe the alleged swallowing of the sum of 6.8 billion naira by a gorilla in the Kano Zoological Gardens. The governor, in a statement by his chief press secretary, Abba Angwar, says wants the investigation to commence immediately. The governor expresses concern over the allegation and wants the commission to do an aggressive investigation towards unearthing every detail surrounding the incident. Meanwhile, the executive chairman of the commission, Muhuyi Magaji, told our correspondent that his commission is already investigating the matter and that there are evidence before it. He's promising that the commission will catch the gorilla that swallowed the money and bring it back for prosecution. Fighting the insurgency in the northeastern part of the country is not restricted to the battlefield alone. It also requires a fresh infusion of competent personnel to deal with the changing faces of the conflict. So what's the same, the Nigerian Air Force has trained 611 special forces in counterterrorism and force protection as part of efforts to effectively tackle insurgency and other related crimes across the country. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, told the trainees of the Basic Regiment Officers course during the combined graduation ceremony at NAF base in Kaduna that the nation expects them to secure its sovereignty. According to one of the proponents of air power, Golio Doez, I quote, it is easier and more effective to destroy the enemy's aerial power by destroying his nest and eggs on the ground than to haunt his flying birds in the air, unquote. Our current security environment, with its attendant threats and challenges to Nigerian Air Force bases and infrastructure, has also brought to fore the need for the Nigerian Air Force to be able to not just project air power, but adequately ensure the protection of Nigerian Air Force air assets, 
in furtherance of national security imperatives. Also, mindful of the fact that a well-protected Air Force is a formidable force capable of carrying out its air power roles unhindered, the Nigerian Air Force understood the need to enhance the security of our bases and air assets against external attacks while at the same time improving our operational efficiency in terms of projecting air power. A spate of attacks by bandits on the nation's highways have become increasingly worrisome. As it appears, security agencies are having a somewhat difficult time containing the problem. And what makes the security challenges more unbearable is a seeming resurrection of violent groups when it appears the federal government has gotten a grip on the situation. In this next report, our correspondent Aurel Luashunibare examines the problems instilling fear in the minds of Nigerians. President Muhammad Buhari's recent meeting with state governors to discuss the security challenges across the country gave an indication that there's no resting on ours. After the meeting, the chairman of the governor's forum, Kari Refaya Miyabekiti State, briefed on what transpired. We felt as chief security officers in our respective states, it's also important for us to at least uh, keep Mr. President abreast of the enormity of the challenges we're, we're, we're facing. Militancy in the Delta, um, insurgency, cultism. So we discussed extensively all of these issues. He however steps on the brakes when asked about state police. We have not taken a position because experiences vary. There are governors and states where uh, their experience does not necessarily lend itself to uh, a more devolved policing arrangement to the states. But there are also states where there are agitations for this and their own governors to have a view that that will work better in such states. A valid point, many will say, but in the wake of all the problems identified by the governor, not taking a stance may create a negative perception in the minds of Nigerians who are already worried about the number of police officers available to carry out the task of protecting them. Since the inception of Boko Haram in 2002, hundreds of thousands of Nigerians have either been killed or displaced. Over the years, the federal government promised that the insurgents would be defeated. The battle recorded some successes with airstrikes, weapon seizures and parade of suspects. But then the insurgents appeared to take a back seat and out came another problem, where herdsmen were accused of moving around with automatic weapons killing freely. <laughs> Voices of condemnation was aired by the authorities and a show of force to contain the attacks was again put in place. <laughs> But just when everyone thought that was done, another group, known as bandits, stepped up to claim the throne of violence, taking over highways, killing and kidnapping. The house notes with apprehension the desertedly attacks and kidnappings carried out on Irua, Lanlate, Igaga, Tapa, Ayite, Ibora, and Ibere, Ibarapa East, Ibarapa Central, and Ibarapa North local government areas of Oyo State by armed bandits and criminal elements. Optimism may be high on the part of the government that the challenges will be surmounted, but do the people share that feeling? Faith will most likely be restored when people can sleep peacefully and move freely without fear of the men from the shadows. Oralu Ashunibare, Channels Television News. Let's talk some more now about the nation's security. Channel TV's data consultant, Babajide Oguso, will join me now on the news at 10. Babajide, great to have you. And I see another uh, crystal ball is back. Hopefully before the end of tonight, we'll try and make some forecast on security. Maybe you will look into it this time, perhaps. Uh, to support the national goal of a more secured nation, governors are meeting, governors from the southwest are meeting for a regional summit. Will that have an impact on what's currently going on? Will it help to reduce you know, some of the security concerns, especially the robbery and highway kidnappings going on? It, it could have an impact if their goals are very clear. Um, so we need to look at what will be the goals of the summit. Mm. But before we talk about the details of the solutions to the security challenges, let's cast our mind back to the United States. More than 
half a century ago. The United States were led by President John F. Kennedy, popularly called JFK. Today, Nigeria has its own version of JFK. Now, what do I mean by JFK? Jihadist, Fulani herdsmen and farmers, and kidnappers. So here's the first thing I'd like to focus on tonight. Let's look at the five ways that insecurity can affect the Southwest and indeed Nigeria. The first is the evidence from the NBA shows that 35% of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises are located in Southwest Nigeria. In other words, approximately one out of three SMEs are in the Southwest. And so if you do not manage the insecurity concerns, that means that we could potentially have a challenge when it comes to supply of goods and services from MSMEs. The second is to look at the evidence as well that shows that 46% of internally generated revenue comes from the Southwest. Yeah. Again, insecurity in the Southwest could mean challenges to national income, especially if you also look at the fact that shows that more than half of capital that was imported into the country as well went into shares, and by shares you're looking at the Nigerian Stock Exchange and where is that? Lagos. Again, insecurity in the Southwest could in influence investor appetite. Clearly, we know how significant the Southwest is, especially at Papa Pot, where we know that approximately 98% of all exports goes through a Papa West, a Papa mm. Lagos, West, Lagos, Southwest. So clearly, especially even on jobs, the Southwest, insecurity in the Southwest not only affects the economy of the Southwest, the conclusion is that insecurity in the Southwest, if not addressed, affects the national economy. I think it's interesting that you've pointed out all of these issues because really kidnappings and insecurity in the Southwest will affect, you know, the economy. And this is where you have the bulk of it. So should security agencies then change the ways that their methods that they're applying? Is there something wrong with the methods they've been applying so far, you know, to curb the security concerns? And what should they do now? With security, there are really three pillars. So let's look at the evidence on what we have. And the three pillars are leadership. And by leadership, we're talking about President Buhari. The second is strategy. And strategy really rests with the chief of defense staff, General Abayomi Olonishaki. And the third is tactics. And by tactics, that resides, when we, when we talk about tactics, it's really all about insight, information, and intelligence. And that lies with Air Vice Marshal M.S. Usman. So that's really the three, those are the three pillars of, of security. So what Nigerians are really concerned about, which is what you're concerned about, is how have these security agencies performed? And the global database of terrorism, which is managed by the University of Maryland, provides us some answers about how security agencies have performed, especially under the chief of defense staff and the chief of defense intelligence. And the evidence shows that since 2014, when the deaths due to terrorism hit its peak, over 7,000 deaths due to terrorism in 2014. The evidence shows that there have been three consecutive years of decline of deaths due to terrorism. And so if the indicator of measuring performance is number of attacks and number of deaths, then we've seen a continuous decline in the number of deaths recorded. But the challenge is what three things Nigerians are bothered about, and that is first, mm -hmm. is that there was once a nation where number of deaths due to terrorism was nil. And that is why Nigerians are still agitated. That's the first reason. The second reason why Nigerians are still agitated is because initially terrorism was high and concentrated in the northeast. Now terrorism is relatively lower, but it's spread around. Mm -hmm. Now the third and final reason why Nigerians are concerned about is what I started talking about initially, JFK. Jihadists initially, now we have Fulani herdsmen and Kidnapping. So what is the solution? And if there's only one solution we can quickly recommend right now, is that the president needs to move from an excuse-based system to a consequence-based system. In other words, there has to be consequences for performance and consequences for non-performance. When military yeah. heads succeed, they should be rewarded. And when they fail, if they fail, they should be punished. That is the summary. And hopefully they're listening. Thanks again for joining us. There are consequences if you hadn't stopped me right now. Well, that should, we should move into a consequences-based system. Right. There's really nothing to laugh about this issue. It's really serious. Thanks again, Babajide, for joining us Pleasure on is all mine. the News of 10.